Good morning and welcome to the Japan Business Insights Room with Stephen Lujan and Tomoko Mitsuoka. Today is May 13th and our topic is marketing for small and middle-sized businesses in Japan. Stephen, we start with you. Well, hi, good morning. Well, maybe first uh, uh, I'd like to introduce myself to some people in the audience and see uh, Asa. Asa is my uh, new friend from uh, Android user. Uh, yeah, I've been in a couple of rooms with him. It's very interesting. He lives in Osaka. Ravi, of course, Nathan and, uh, and Timoteo. Yeah, so, uh, so my name is Steven. I'm a VP marketing in a company called MyCircle International. And uh, originally I have a background in travel, tourism and hospitality management, but I majored in sales and marketing in 2002. Um, although uh, today I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm running a digital marketing agency, um, I started in print with magazine catalogs, uh, direct mail, uh, digital printing, etc. I mean, uh, I'm saying this because when you are doing print in terms of marketing, you, you'll see that it's not just putting a picture in a page of a magazine and hope that things will happen. You have to think of strategy. You have to understand the customer. You have, you have to understand the market and you have to find different ways to help clients reach their goals. But uh, progressively, I turned into digital marketing about eight years ago, not because it was trendy or cool, but simply because um, it's been proven to be the most efficient and economical way to help clients uh, with their business objectives. Um, I, don't, I don't have the pretension to consider myself a digital marketing expert, not at all. Uh, but what we do offer to our clients is, uh, whether it's in Japan or in America or, or other country uh, we're working with, is a uh, um, business solution uh, along with sales and marketing strategies uh, tailored to their business, their needs, budget, goals, etc. Um, the thing is, uh, to answer your question about uh, small, small, medium-sized businesses here, it's uh, what I would say is that um, it, we have that conception that AI is the most important thing. We have that conception that digital marketing is the solution to a remedy that uh, every business has, but that's not true. It's just a tool and people don't realize that marketing is not the solution, it's a tool. And uh, and although it's very, very, very important, what I see regardless of the industry is uh, one, the misconception of the concept of marketing and misuse. And, and, and because of that, you have a, a, a whole bunch of, of um, people or, or uh, agencies that offer solutions that are not necessarily made to, to, to fix or, or to, to help clients um, with their current challenges or concerns. And, uh, um, and for example, you know, like people are very familiar with Facebook. So they think like, oh, I want to, I want to advertise on Facebook. I want to advertise my product, my service, or my business on Facebook, and uh, and you are a Facebook expert. Uh, can you can you help me? Yeah, sure, I can help you. But but it takes more than that. Like to to me, I mean, the way we work, we actually work on creating a, a plan with using you know various various uh, uh, strategies, uh, whether it's it's uh, awareness, uh, whether it's uh, sales. Uh, are we working on the top of the funnel? Uh, like, how are you situating your business right now uh, towards your customer? Do you have your your uh, uh, ideal uh, customer profile in mind? You know, and and uh, is your do you have your your business profile also set up? Like, how your business avatar and your customer avatar talk to each other? You know, like, so, so what I think is, it's very interesting for, 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 for small businesses, especially in the countryside where, where I'm located, um, people don't have this mindset of thinking that, well, just because I open a business and, uh, and I have a sign at the door that says we're open and look, I have 20% off today. If you come, 
uh, it's not enough for people to come and, 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 and support your business. You have a lot of work to do. Well, thank you for that. I think that you made really some interesting points and in, uh, talking about advertising and then um, uh, the, well, the, the sales funnel and so on. I think that it is also important that, um, well, probably we need to, um, you know, educate to a certain extent the, those small businesses which uh, you're talking about in the towns and villages so that, uh, well, they actually are aware of uh, how you can help them. Exactly. It's important to accompany them and um, make them realize that at the end of the day, if let's take a restaurant, for example, if you, you decide to open a restaurant, you're not a marketer, you know, you're, you're a chef, you know, and, uh, and it's important that, that uh, you focus on what's the most important to you, which is provide your, your guests with good cuisine, great atmosphere, and, and, uh, and run your business, obviously. And, and, uh, Marketing is so interesting, even for for, I mean, for any entrepreneur or business owner, because um, you you kind of want to uh, you have that image of, of you and, and your product, and you want to to share this with with the world, and and you you end up spending way too much time trying to figure out this complicated um, world of communication and PR and and marketing and content like. Like, why would you do that? You know, like, there's a there's a, a lot of experts that are, are actually trained and, uh, and and know how all that system work. And the thing is, what I see a lot today, which is which is okay. You know, I see a lot of people trying to do things by themselves, um, and uh, and it can end up very very pricey because you you probably invest the money in the wrong areas. Um, you think you're saving a lot of money, but at the end of the month, you're, you, there's no return on investment. You know, all you're doing is just throwing money out the window and there's, there's no result or very little result. You know, like as long as you do something, I guess something is happening. Um, Tomoko was talking about, uh, technology, for example, and, and that's what it is. You know, like you take, um, Facebook uh, again, because everybody knows that just as an example. Uh, every time you log into Facebook, you notice that there's a new design, a feature, or a new plugin, something like that. And uh, and only uh, marketers or, or professional in the field actually have uh, the knowledge of all the changes that is happening, uh, even before they change to the for for the public. You know, like they have that that knowledge and they know how to adapt their strategy, the message, uh, uh, to to help you moving forward. So. To my point, if if primarily you're uh, a chef or hair stylist or a farmer, um, uh, yeah, you, you have no time to learn this. And, and if you do it, you're probably going to do it wrong. And and I think we have a responsibility as as uh, marketers to to help them, you know, and uh, and uh, and and also be aware that these are very difficult times. So we kind of have an obligation of really trying our best to to uh, uh, bring results to them and, uh, and be aware of the, that the cash is running very low. Um, what do you think the, the biggest mistakes commonly taken by those SMEs nowadays, especially in the, the area you are living now? Is that using the wrong, using the wrong technologies, or is that no. they are doing it by themselves? They can't post, post, post to their own goodness. I think the biggest mistake is, uh, is yeah, it's kind of like uh, um, before even knowing where to go. Like they have a okay, well, uh, oh. I, I, I don't have enough money. Uh, there's a Corona. Um, I need more customers, but but I cannot have too much customers because I have to do social distancing. And uh, uh, so anyway, I need to to promote my business smartly. And uh, and I like Instagram. I like Facebook. Everybody does that, so it must work. Uh, so I want to advertise my business on Facebook. So they just choose a strategy 
and build a plan around it rather than having a, a goal and then um, and then you know eventually talk to somebody who's who's a, a, um, a expert of sort in the in the business who will actually tell them well based on your strategy based on what you're trying to do based on your budget um, I think the most efficient uh, uh, strategy for you is to use a, a blend of of you know uh, paper click or a blend of of display or, or, or and you know like and, and 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 together try to find a solution to to help them reach their goals like right now they just the biggest mistake is for them to just say hey this is the, the new trendy thing i see everybody using tiktok i'm going to use tiktok you know and 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 they don't necessarily know how so so the biggest mistake i would say is not to ask the, the right people i see a lot of people uh, thinking that pr is the solution uh, that pr is the pr company or pr agencies are the best way to go to to, to help with your marketing but pr agencies are not marketing agencies usually like pr uh, i mean they're great at at writing an article at, at building that relationship between you and and your your customer but they're not necessarily equipped to vehicle that met vehicle that message out in an efficient manner they don't necessarily have the tools for that it like means the people tend to use a single strategies rather than overall strategy of marketing exactly so, that's what i think i i think uh like i have people sometimes telling me like oh hi yeah i want to market my business uh, and i want to do it uh, on Instagram. It's like, why Instagram? Oh, because it's cool. You know, and, and you see, you've probably seen those Instagram profile where you have like a mosaic of picture. It looks great. It looks like a great flyer online, but that's not how you use Instagram, you know? So it looks great. Uh, you're going to get likes. You're going to get share eventually. You're going to get comments. That's, but, but this is not what's going to actually help your business, you know, like the, vanity metric it makes you feel good every time somebody click on that on your uh, on your ad or you're going to use um uh influencers that's something that always comes like oh i, I want an influencer to, to 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 come to my business take some pictures and write a blog or something like that um yeah this is this is not working this is not uh, 2005 anymore you know and influencers and what what we see out there is that um i often say like there's a difference between influencers and actual uh, people that can that, that that have a big following. You know, um, people with big following don't necessarily influence the, the, the market or influence the market for you. They may be influencing uh, the market for themselves. Why not? But but not necessarily for you. They, or, or do they have enough juice to drive action from consumers? It means you. It means that um, the TikTok or whatever the that sort of um, in, SM, um, SNS um, makes the, the owner famous doesn't mean that will bring the business to them, right? Exactly, exactly. Like like being seen. It's not necessarily driving the action that you're looking for. And, and you see this often, um, and I mentioned it in the, I think it was last week when I was talking about what is marketing exactly, you know? And, and uh, I like the idea that marketing is the art and the science of connecting a business and a customer base. And, 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 and what I see in Japan a lot is that in the Japanese market, people understand the artistic part of it, you know, a, a design, a content, things like that. Like people understand that. And, and it's very ingrained in the, the Japanese culture where um, we truly appreciate like beautiful things. And that's why you see in the marketing strategy of a lot of companies and especially the small one, uh, they think that just having a great ad, a beautiful ad would be enough to to drive uh, online traffic or offline traffic to their their business, 
And uh, but I, that's not enough because you see a lot of free, uh, very valuable content out there. I mean, everybody sees those pictures of Japan and videos of Japan. Uh, when you you have a, a city that try to promote itself, uh, I mean, we all agree that it's beautiful, right? But there's no call to action. You rarely see a call to action telling people this is what we want you to do, and that's totally uh, uh, normal because um, you know I think culturally in Japan we don't uh, like to go upon and tell people this is what I expect from you directly. So we kind of sit back and wait to see uh, how they're going to interact with, with that ad. Um, however, um, uh, I mean, it, it, it's the scientific, I mean, the science part of the marketing is what I think is the most interesting is to be able to understand the why, basically, you know, uh, well, why, why do you have a website? I mean, a website is beautiful, but why do you have it? And seriously, ask a small business. Sometimes they don't even know why they have a website. They'll tell you, well, because everybody has one. And I met a marketing person who said that if I don't have a website, my business will be closed next 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 year. And that uh, that's what you do when you have a business. You need to have a website and and put your information out there. But that's not a website. Is not just a a flyer <laughs> that you put on the net. You know, uh, it, it's a very powerful tool that you can use to to track uh, uh, various uh, 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 visitors I mean, user behavior uh, what's working what's not working what um, uh, I mean it, it's people need to realize that that I mean, to my point that it's not just the, the look of things okay I'm rather more for a qualitative analysis rather than quantitative or even not a really digital marketer so that I don't track those digital thingy. But um, I think the marketing is rather, should be more proactive than reactive. And in Japan, people um, reactive and if you do this and forward, just let them um, just see how it goes kind of um, thing more so it should be more the um, business owners to think what they want to do rather than what people um, what people um, think of them so they need to more aggressively, more aggressive, not really aggressively, but more proactively than what they are doing now. Because they are just sitting in the office or in the restaurant or hair saloon and just keep fingers crossed that the customer is coming, right? Yeah, no, you're right. And, and, and the thing is, in, in this period of time where uh, it's very difficult and, and also we have the tools uh, of everywhere in the world and, and also in Japan, and people don't really know that. Uh, I mean, people, when, when I say people, I'm talking about um, people in the business sector because it's not their, their, uh, their field. They don't know how precise they can actually target target their their uh, their audience precisely you know like people would just go okay i'm gonna uh geo target a certain area uh certain demographic and uh, uh that makes a certain income uh, lifestyle things like that i mean you go on facebook you can play with those tools by yourself with uh, uh so you feel like oh i can i can set this up you know <laughs> But uh, but there's it's still it's, it's it's still not as precise as if you have access to to uh, Google's backend technology, Facebook backend technology, uh, or things like that. If you have um, a, a AI system that allows you to actually uh, uh, layer you know the customer profile to the T, and and uh, you know if you want to reach. Uh, women that are left-handed and uh, who divorced twice 
uh, I mean, there's a way, I mean, I'm not saying like it's a, it's a perfect science, <laughs> but, but you can actually target uh, this, you know, like uh, we talked about, about the geofencing the other day, um, you know, like for example, uh, uh, you can geofence an actual building to, to maybe 10 inches away from each wall, any shape, instead of having that, that, that circle that you just dropped on top of a, a, a Google map, things like that. So, so, I mean, that's how you can save money, you know, invest better. And, and, and when you get your, your report, you, you see where you need to focus on, where you need to invest more money, where you need to be careful and what strategy to approach. And, and it's, it, it's, it's very important to, to be aware that there's technology out there that you can use that would help you save money and make more money. Because like I said earlier, cash is running low, you know, and, and, uh, and it's sad to see businesses actually, uh, uh, closing down because um, they didn't know anything about um, the, the capability of, of, of the market. To make the technology work for the owners, um, the, the data work for them, it's very important to, to, con to have a good concept, strategy, and on top of that, they need to do who they should target for their I mean, the business. Is that what you actually tried to say? Yes. Who is your customer? Who are you trying to reach? What uh, what do you want to do with them? Like what 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 are you trying to sell? Or do you want to try to sell a product or service or you just want to build awareness? Uh, at what stage of the funnel are you situating uh, situating situating yourself? Uh, you know, the other day we spoke about that that uh, that shop that just opened in Natami, who uh, and all he wanted is sales. But I was, I told him, like, dude, I mean, it's a small business, right? Very small. It's like nobody knows you. Like, um, before you start selling, don't you think they should know that you exist? Like, but in his mind, because I mean, sometimes business owners this. They've been working on their, their own project and ideas for, for months and years. So so that's their little universe, right? So they think they're just going to open the door and everybody's going to rush in. And no, it doesn't work like that. People need to know about you and need to trust you uh, before committing to, to give you uh, their money. So, so yeah, know your customer, know what you want to do, and... Uh, and don't underestimate the power of branding because everybody wants the, the uh, quick fix, you know, and that's why, um, you know, when they're featured on TV and then the next day they have a long line in front of their, their restaurant or, or boutique, uh, they, they think that, oh, wow, that's great marketing. No, no, it's not sustainable, man. It's, 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 <laughs> you, need, you need more than that. So, oh, sorry, I thought Gary, hey, good morning, Gary. Gary just, just came on. Sorry, couldn't get to the uh, couldn't get to my phone in time. Um, yes, I, I agree with Tomoko, and I agree with you, Stephen. I think it's uh, marketing is very important, and as you said, it's data driven, and knowing who your target population is and reaching out to them, I think is critical. And at the same time, I know I am, and I think many people are intimidated and rather overwhelmed with with online marketing and branding. It seems like there's so much to know as to the, the technical side of how to apply, pardon me, how to apply um, your desires and get the, get the word out about your, your company. Could, could you make any suggestions for uh, novice, novices who believe in marketing but uh, intimidated by it. Well, I, I think you don't have to be intimidated by it. I, uh, I think it's a myth because you have a whole bunch of, of guys out there and uh, I certainly hope I'm, I'm not part of them, you know, who, who um, uh, use like complicated words, you know, like a, a click-through rate, uh, 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 you know, like, like uh, uh, 
who, who cares? You know, like who cares about all this complicated stuff on the platform? I don't know how to use it and stuff. All you need to do as a business owner is just uh, um, uh, use social media, for example, not to advertise eventually, but to to connect with your audience, connect with your customers, and 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 try to try to think of a, a like, a share, or a comment as as a digital currency. You know. Uh, look at on, on Clubhouse, for example. Uh, uh, how many people follow you, and but how many people actually connected with you on Twitter or, or Instagram or whatever is available? And not everybody is spending any any uh, currency because the uh, digital currency because they just feel like it's it's um, uh, if you follow me, that's it. That, uh, it's gold. It's gold because now I have that huge number. It makes me feel so good. But at the end of the day, social media is meant for you to to have a conversation with your audience, uh, introduce yourself, show that your business is not just a business. You're you're a person. And uh, um, are you suggesting when people follow you to reach out to them? Then? Of course. I mean, wh why following somebody if you don't communicate with them? You know. I mean, to to me, I. Uh, I mean, I, look, I, I'm horrible in, in speaking Japanese, and that's that's one of uh, one of my my big problems. So I'm using some sort of translator tools, you know, like when I I, I hop on the social media, and uh, I see uh, somebody who's following me and took a picture. I will say, hey, wow, that's a beautiful picture and stuff, and and we start talking, you know, and and that's what I'm suggesting is to not just follow uh, to have a quantity of followers, but but follow to, to build that connection. That's what I'm suggesting. Um, I like to mention uh, Best Buy, for example, 8 million followers, 8 million. I mean, it would make everybody dream, right? Every time they post something, they have 12 likes. You know, it doesn't mean anything, you know? And it's simply because they don't, they don't uh, engage with, with their, their follow, followers or, or fan, or I don't know how, how you call it. But um, but to me is is also to uh, to reach out to to professionals, but not necessarily people that say, "Hey, I'm a, I'm an expert in marketing." People that are willing to walk with you hand in hand to find solution to 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 your your challenges. People that are willing to work with you, and that's where uh, I kind of pride myself of doing is that when um, I work with a client. So of course, I, when I work with big clients, it's different. But when I, um, I really want to try to help small businesses, and uh, and I want to be part of their team. You know, I always tell people like, hey, you know what, um, you're, you're you're a small business, right? I understand that that uh, uh, you don't have a big budget, but just consider me and my team as part of your team, and just call us anytime. And you tell us what you need, what you do, what keeps you up at night. And what I found very difficult in Japan is people don't really share very easily because you have that pride um, uh, aspect of things. Uh, they don't really like to talk about their problem or if they really want to make just, just make a lot of money. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't sound good to say that like I love money, I want I want to be rich, you know. But um, it's important to have that dialogue and and transparency and. And we come up with, with, with a plan and we work with you. Thank you for that. Uh, I'm I'm sorry to say that I have to uh, start getting ready to to uh, actually go out uh, for the day to a client. So I, I apologize for my short stay here, but I greatly appreciate uh, Tomoko, Maya, Stephen, and Timothy for uh, hosting this room, and and I, I look forward to joining again. Thank you, hey, Gary. Gary. Thank you, Gary. Have okay, a great take day. care. Take care. Okay. Bye, Gary. So, uh, Stephen, as, you know, as I said at the beginning of this, uh, marketing is not my thing, but I've spoken to you a lot, both you know, in these rooms and offline, and uh, I, I find so many parallels with my experiences in a completely different industry. And before I, I go through what I want to say, I, I'm starting with the premise that, and, and I mean this sincerely, that you know what you're doing, you're very competent, you're sincere, and you're honest, and that you have a lot of 
um, solutions to their marketing challenges. Um, but based on talking to you, I feel like one of the more fundamental challenges, and I had the same in my industry, is convincing your Japanese clients, and I'm focusing solely on Japan, just because that was my area, um, to listen to you and to, you know, to take your advice and to get them to understand, uh, you know, that you know what you're doing, and in a gentle way, without saying it, that they maybe don't know what they're doing when they make these presumptions about how they think they need to market. For example, that you gave, the client says, I want to go on Facebook. Right away, they're jumping to that conclusion. And I'm going to give you an example. It's kind of a reverse example, but it parallels, okay? So in the manufacturing field, I worked with a lot of Japanese companies in the U.S., and they were, they're great at manufacturing, and they were all trained in Deming. And their biggest complaint about the local Americans was that Americans take action without understanding the current situation or, or the current problems. And so Americans would try to do all these things, but they weren't asking the right questions and they weren't defining the current situation. And I almost see that in reverse with your situation. Sometimes the Japanese that you're dealing with, it sounds like based on some of your stories, are trying to take action without understanding the current situation. And your job is to, you know, uh, before you even make a strategy for them, is to get them to understand based on your analysis, what is the current situation before we come up with these solutions? Um, do you find that, is that a big challenge for you? Because that's kind of how I'm reading it, having spoken with you. I think one, some of the biggest challenge I get is for me to get a, 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 a good understanding of the, the current situation because um, I like to understand where they're coming from, what is their, their problem, what, what problem they're facing, and uh, in order for me to, you know, to, to draft a proposal that would help them moving forward. Um, like, for example, when we ask somebody, what, what is your budget, it's not because of greed, it's just because you want to know, you know, what's their, their, their spending capability. Uh, uh, and, and we're going to draft a solution based on, on what they're comfortable spending in marketing. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely, um, uh, the example I was giving the other day is people would tell you, okay, this is what I want to do and this is how I want you to do it. And, uh, uh, and the example I give was, okay, I want to eat spaghetti meatball, but I want you to cook my spaghetti, my uh, spaghetti without, without water on the barbecue grill. It's like, yeah, no, that's, that, no, that, it doesn't work like that. Yeah, but I love barbecue food. Yeah, but spaghetti, you need water, you know? And that, these are the kind of, um, issue that, uh, that I face sometimes, especially with small businesses because, um, yeah, they're just stuck you know, in, in, in their mind, this is what works. And, and I want my, I love barbecue food, but I want to eat spaghetti. Sometimes just that doesn't match. How do you think that this challenge could be uh, overcome? Over time, <laughs> I think like some of the small business that I'm working with, um, we, yeah, we started building relationship and then eventually we warm up to each other, but uh, for for quick fix, what I started doing is uh, I have a small project that that my company is doing on the side uh, with my circle where where we try to do like bulk marketing. So uh, in order to avoid having to discuss with a client and and teach them about marketing and different strategy, we try to regroup them, uh, regroup businesses that pretty much um, share the same uh, segmenting uh, of the market, the same segment, same demographic, sort of. And, uh, and we make a camp campaign with goals that we set, you know, a strategy that we decide, uh, and, and we actually market that group uh, to, that, <clears throat> to that market. Um, and then we we're able each month to show some report. Okay, this is what we've done uh, with our strategy, and this is the the result. 
and eventually use that opportunity to teach them how digital marketing solution works, make them comfortable because, I mean, I understand when sometimes you don't understand a certain concept or a certain industry, like you, one, you don't want to learn or two, you're kind of afraid to jump in and, and put your money in it. So, so it's, for me, I think that's a, a good way, a quick way to, um, to, to fix that issue of um, uh, disconnect sometimes with clients. That's great. In my industry, and I work in the travel and tourism industry, I have seen this, um, well, it's um, the reverse way, you know, of, uh, of things. So basically, um, you know, destinations uh, that want uh, Japanese visitors to, uh, to go there, uh, you know, they come to the Japanese market and they, they say, okay, we've got this product and we want uh, you to come, but their product is actually not so, um, you know, not so desirable. Uh, here. And what uh, we have been trying to do actually is, you know, to uh, we hold um, seminars and um, we've, we've got um, also, um, well, summits where we, we, we give information, uh, you know, about how the Japanese market actually works. So I have found, I'm a big fan, in, fan of, um, you know, educating uh, not only the, the customer, but also the partners who want to work with the Japanese market. So that's why I asked you, you know, how you, you thought you, you know, that the challenge could be over overcome. And I think that probably one of the ways is uh, to get, uh, you know, more information out about how um, marketing and digital marketing works. Because you don't have to, to write in details, you know, what your strategies are or what, uh, you know, um, well, what you do. Uh, well, basically every time you, you have a project, but, you know, helping people understand, especially the, the owners of SMEs. So if they, you know, understand how digital marketing can help them, you know, how it can solve their problems, probably, you know, it will help you. It will be good in the middle and the long term as well. I don't know what your thoughts uh, are on this, but this is what I have seen, you know, uh, in my field and I wonder whether uh, it can be implemented in, in yours. Yeah, like that, that's a good example, actually, Maya, because, um, of course, you know, coming from Hawaii, I work a lot with um, uh, the Hawaii Tourism Authority. Uh, they've been client of ours for, oh, way before I was born, actually. <laughs> but um, we, we still work with them. And, um, for example, you, let's take a small uh, activity uh, booth. In Hawaii, you know, like the guy who sells kayak or surf lessons. Um, so, it, it, actually, that's a bad example. Let, let me try to think of uh, something in Japan. Um, do you have something like a like a little? Uh, I, mean, I never really travel in Japan for for tourist thing. What, what's a touristic activity in Japan, for example? What do you have in mind? Do you have, do you have a, an example for me, like a? Oh, you mean, okay, so uh, basically one of the really glaring examples has been, uh, well, let's say uh, foreign destinations, they come uh, and they say, okay, we've got this really wonderful skiing package. And we believe that the Japanese will be happy to come skiing, you know, uh, let's say in... Um, in Japan, Yes, thank you, Tomoko-san, yes. So, and that's the point, you know, that uh, some destinations, they say, okay, uh, we want the Japanese visitors to come uh, to uh, Austria, you know, all the way to Europe. So they, they get on the airplane, they, uh, you know, they're on the airplane for 13 hours and then another couple of hours, you know, to the uh, ski resort. And, uh, well, we know that they'll enjoy skiing, but basically that's not what the Japanese market wants. I mean, I'm talking about the uh, overseas travel market and it shows, you know, that uh, basically uh, that destination has not done their um, research here, but it's not only their fault. It's also our fault because we haven't uh, given them enough information. So the point is that, uh, which I'm trying to make is give them enough information so that they know how to position themselves here in the market. And then, so pro, I guess, you know, that by educating the partners and educating also uh, the customers, uh, you bridge, you know, that gap. 
this is what uh, I have seen, you know, uh, or what we have been dying, uh, doing, sorry, doing in, uh, in, um, <clears throat> Uh, in the association which I work for. So I just wondered, of course, uh, it's sometimes difficult, you know, to educate everybody, to tell them what, uh, you know, they will gain and they will, they will benefit from if you work for them. So that's why I was thinking that probably, you know, uh, giving some information online or having seminars, you know, uh, let's say re on a regional basis or even, you know, webinars uh, could be helpful uh, and probably can uh, actually um, you know, give you that opportunity to, to get more clients as well. I don't know what, how you think about this. Well, it, it wouldn't hurt, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, nowadays with, uh, we talked about AI, for example, you know, now you can actually target for your specific activity or specific business uh, travelers uh, in any countries uh, um, based on the contextual, you can do like contextual targeting, category uh, contextual targeting, you can do some IP targeting, whatever, like geofencing and stuff where you can geofence some, some uh, terminals and you can advertise your activity, your destination, whatever you want to do prior to people even buying their airplane, airplane ticket. Just because at one point they show a behavior of, uh, I want to, I want to travel to Japan, and uh, and you actually draft um, uh, when you make your customer avatar, uh, you you want somebody that is interested in skiing. As Stephen, I th we cannot hear you. And, uh, and, and it's funny because a lot of people, like, uh, like when I'm mentioning that activity booth in Hawaii, uh, the surf lesson, you can actually, as soon as somebody goes online in Japan and start researching vacation, Hawaii, uh, you know, the AI would actually refine the, the, the profile of that, that uh, ideal customer and start advertising for your little booth even before the guy purchased his ticket. So that's that's actually very, um, very cool to know. Yes, it obviously, I mean, what I, what I was trying to say was that if more small and middle enterprise owners know that, probably they will be more open to using your services and services of other digital marketers as well. So giving them that information on a wider basis uh, could be beneficial to uh, your industry as a whole. Yes, that's true. That, that's true. And it all comes down to, you know, communication and openness, you know, like, a, like um, going back to what are the challenges sometimes with small and medium-sized company. Um, when I meet with people, I usually just like to have a conversation. Uh, I, I really just want to want to know like, hey, what are the, your challenges? And uh, but I mean, realistically, when you meet with people, people think that you're trying to sell them something. And, uh, and I think the, the sales aspect of the meeting just comes way after. Because like I like to say, when I get enough information from you, when I tell them what are, uh, what tools uh, they can use actually uh, uh, to, to help with their business problem or marketing, um, I'm not even sure I'm going to, I'm going to, say okay to work with them because to me even though i have the tools i have the team and the knowledge and stuff um maybe i i can't help you honestly maybe your product is 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 too difficult and uh or your service is too difficult to market and and i think uh today uh it would be a waste of your money to start marketing your place like the example i give tim um uh, I was working with a, a little gym uh, in Numazu, 
And the guy said, yeah, I want to market my gym. I said, yeah, sure. Okay, so this is what we can do. Blah, blah, blah. What is your budget? Okay, give me the budget. And then um, I did some research and I'm like, dude, I cannot, I cannot market your gym. You're just going to waste money. Why? Because there's no way people are going to actually pay money to go to your gym. Why? Because your service suck. <laughs> you know, like you, you open at, at 9 in the morning, you close at 10 p.m., there's no personal trainer. You're not even there. There's nobody. Like you have no staff at your gym. You only have like a like a little. You have a little garage, with equipment in it, and a radio, and like I can bring people to your door, but there's no service. So why don't you, you know, and I'll help you. You know, like let's work together. Why don't we uh, 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 fix this? part of your business and then we can market your business otherwise i mean i'll take your money but you're not going to make any money in return it makes sense right so so uh so yeah so 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 that's uh something that is uh, important to know is to that that you have people out there that just want to sell you a solution take your money and don't care about the results and, and, and that's why sometimes um, marketers are, are losing the trust from business owners because you have a lot of people that would offer uh, Facebook marketing or content marketing, SEO and stuff and, and uh, just take the quick buck, but don't really care about, about what, what's, what, what comes next. So it's like a, a marketer shouldn't sell themselves to the business owners but we, should, oh, the mark, um, I'm self, my self is in marketing, so I should say, we should tell them, you know, we should be more advising them than selling ourselves, right? Well, that, that's the approach I'm taking. I think um, <clears throat> I consider myself as, as you know, uh, like a, a supportive person, like, okay, uh, I'm here to help you. You know, what can I do? What can I do for you? And, uh, uh, and yeah, instead of just trying, uh, like, okay, the, let's take another example. Um, somebody that doesn't have a website, why would you push uh, a, a small business, a, a farmer or a soba restaurant to, to have a website that would cost him between five and $10,000? Uh, why would you push that on him when, when at the end of the day, all he needs is obviously an online presence, right? So if, if as a marketer, you want to market his place, um, just give him a landing page eventually, you know? So, so you, can, you can still use the, the, all the Google Analytics and all the stuff, uh, but he doesn't have to pay $10,000 to advertise a bowl of ramen, you know? So my point is, is uh, uh, if you work with, if, you, if, if you're like sales driven as a marketer and all you want to do is get your commission and sell something to a client, uh, even though it's a, it's a legitimate solution, it's not really what the client needs. So it's important to have that dialogue and understand what they need and what are their spending capability and what are their goals. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so dialogue is very important. So one of the challenges that I feel sometimes is that the dialogue in Japan is really, really complicated and takes a lot of time because uh, people don't open up as easily as in America. And so you need to, to work on that relationship and build that trust. But uh, to my last point, um, if, if you don't get the trust of the person you're talking to, the business, it's hard for you to, to go out there and explain to them about uh, the tools uh, that are out there, you know. So yes, that's that's exactly what I uh, mean. That if you want to uh, have people trust you more, of course the communication is very important. But you start also with uh, making them understand how uh, digital marketing works, and uh, because well. A confused mind usually says no, but if you have more people understand how you can help them solve, solve their um, problems or reach their goals, then probably you'll have more people come to you and say, yes, I would like to work with you. And from there you can start building, uh, you know, 
your relationship even uh, further. Yes, um, on to Maya's point, people are trained, educated to believe that TikTok will work, Facebook will work, website will work. But not, we are not educated, or people are not educated enough to understand digital marketing is also very, very working in the Japanese market too. So it, it's important for marketers to educate or train or understand them how important digital marketing is. What, what's the main advantage of digital marketing is the ability to measure the result. You know, like traditional marketing, like flyers, TV advertisement, all, all these things, a magazine, it's not designed to show you any actual conversion. So, uh, so yes, you're going to reach people, but it doesn't show you where uh, the leads are coming from or, or which campaign, which ad uh, is working better. So, uh, so where is the money uh, actually spent uh, or used the, the, the best, you know? Um, so digital marketing, the, the definitely uh, being the, the, uh, the ability to measure the result is very, very important. And, um, and also uh, being able to adjust the campaign. What's not working? Okay, let's, let's change it. And because it's digital, it can be done within less than 24 hours. So, so this is like super cool because, uh, you know, back in the day, you print in a newspaper and uh, if there's a typo, it's just stuck on it, <laughs> you know, you're stuck with it. But uh, with digital marketing, you can just fix anything. You can fix the artwork, you can fix the message, you can fix the, the target audience, you can fix so many parameters. And uh, uh, so that's the advantage of digital marketing. So, so um, it's not, I'm not saying that digital marketing is better than, than traditional marketing. That's not what I'm saying because I'm, I'm using both. I'm just saying that the ability to measure give me peace of mind and help uh, drive any strategy because I have data. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. So, um, well, that's a, those are all great points, and um, I think that this is um, a very good, uh, you know, um, time to or a very good no, a note to uh, end that. And then uh, we are almost uh, uh, we have reached uh, nine o'clock. So I would like to say that uh, well, I'm going to close the room now, and uh, I certainly hope that we are going to continue this conversation in the future, the near future, of course. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, well, I'm going to, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again. And uh, well, Tomoku-san, Stephen, Tim, thank you very much for being, uh, well, up here with me and for uh, sharing, uh, well, this opportunity to talk about uh, digital marketing and the small and middle enterprises. So see you everybody and um, have a great day. Thank you thank very much, Maya. Thank you. Thank you, Maya. Hey. Thank you, Maya. I guess I'll see you guys tonight. Yes, sure. Yes, thank you. See you then.